views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. All right, well, coming up on this edition of today's verdict, the Bronx County Bar Association provides services to the Bronx community and beyond. If you have a legal question or issue, their panel of attorneys are always available to help with any problem you may face. Well, tonight, the president of the association he is here on set to tell our viewers all we need to know when it comes to legal services in the Bronx. And by the way, the president of the Bronx Bar also happens to be one of the best trial attorneys around, so we can find out what goes on in a courtroom when the gloves finally come off. As you can see, we have much to get to, so stay tuned. Today's verdict starts right now. Well, hello and welcome to today's verdict, the live and interactive show that gives you your legal rights and options. I'm your host and trial attorney, David Lesh. Today's verdict is always encouraging you to stay connected. Make sure to tweet us at today's verdict and hashtag ask today's verdict if you have a question. Also, make sure to like us and follow us on Facebook at today's verdict and check us out at broxnet.tv forward slash box legal. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to tweet me at David Lesh. Well, the Bronx County Bar Association provides all things legal with doors open to the public every day of the week. A new president has taken over and we are lucky to have Daniel Cassidy on set to tell us all about the Bronx Bar. Dan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, David. All right, well, the Bronx County Bar Association, let's talk a little bit about it. What is the Bronx County Bar Association? The Bar Association is, uh, like it sounds, association of attorneys uh, who primarily either have their offices in or practice in Bronx County. We have civil attorneys, family court attorneys, criminal attorneys, uh, attorneys, housing court attorneys. Uh, so it's a group of all the attorneys uh, who do a number of things for uh, the residents of the Bronx. Now let's say I was somebody in the community who just had a question, uh, an issue. Um, I come to the Bar Association, do I pay a fee? Do I just walk in there? How does it usually work? In terms of there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, with respect to the Bar Association itself, we do have a referral service. And what we've done is over the years, we have uh, sort of winnowed a list of attorneys who have a number of various specialties. If you come into the association with a, with a question that isn't you know, a, a two second answer, yeah. like which door do I go in? Um, you can uh, sign up for the referral service and you pay a small fee, I think it's like 30 or $40, for a half hour consultation with an attorney in that field uh, in which you have a question. Now does the attorney then come to the association to meet with you and talk to you, or do you go to the attorney's office, or is it maybe a combination of both? You can do either. Uh, our association is in room 124 uh, at 851 Grand Concourse, the big marble building on the hill. Uh, and if you speak to, Narada is usually the one who runs our referral service. You speak to her and she recommends an attorney. Often she will call the attorney and the attorney will come down. Sometimes the attorney's right there in the courthouse, or you can make arrangements to go see the attorney. Now what type of questions would somebody usually have if they come into the into the Bronx County Bar? What are they what kind of issues have you seen? You know, it's funny. I'm I'm in the courthouse every day uh, and I spend a lot of time in the association's library, uh, which is the public space. So I have seen people come with literally every potential legal question you can possibly think of. Um, somebody was injured, somebody's having a problem with their landlord, somebody is a grandparent and doesn't know how to assert or what even their rights may be as a grandparent. Somebody's relative has been what they feel is wrongfully arrested and they don't know how to handle it. Every potential real estate, um, housing, landlord tenant, matrimonial, family, every kind of civil case from commercial to personal injury. Right, because I know you know, on this show, a lot of the viewers, they write in, certainly with immigration questions, many times, of course, with landlord-tenant questions. And, they, you know, a lot of the, the viewers, they don't know where to go. Or they, they've had an attorney who's left them or, or abandoned them. So it looks like the Bronx County Bar Association is a good place to, to possibly show up and maybe get some, some guidance. I think it's a, 
I think it's a great place to go. We've really, over the last couple of years, we have really tried to make sure that all the attorneys on our referral, our, our referral list are experts in their fields. Uh, so in immigration, for example, if you come in and, and decide to spend the $40, I think it is, uh, for a half hour consultation with an immigration attorney, you're going to speak to an immigration right. attorney, that's not good for a landlord tenant. Forty dollars to be able, to, or thirty-five, forty dollars to meet with somebody who's an expert in the field. Where could you get that type of? Um, Absolutely, and 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 people worry about maybe spending that money and they don't know if it's in the right place. Well, uh, what I will say is, uh, and and I think you can speak to this. Sure. Thirty-five, forty dollars for a half an hour of an attorney's time to actually get answers to questions. One of which may be, no, you don't have a case. No, you shouldn't waste any more time or money pursuing this. Right. Um, is well worth it. It's well worth it because, you, as you know, so many people worry so much about about these things. Now, so you don't speak English, Spanish. Is there a way to Span no, our our um, the woman who runs the referral service in our association does speak, does Spanish. speak Spanish. If it's a language other than Spanish, there are interpreters available in the courthouse. How available they are, I really you know, it, it's a catch as catch can basis. And the hours, by the way, I think it's like, is it? Nine to four. Nine to four. Uh, occasionally, we will close early on Fridays, depending on what kind of weekend it's going to be. Like, for example, I know this weekend coming up, I'm not even sure we're going to be open Friday, but generally, on a holiday weekend, they'll close at around 12. All right, let's talk a little about some of the other services of the Bronx sure. Bar. I mean, this it's, it's a library. It's a beautiful uh, room to used to walk into. What else do, can, does it provide, the Bronx County Bar itself? Well, one of the things is, is the library. You have access to to the public as part of our charter uh, for the space, we provide uh, a fully updated library, law library for the public. Uh, we have the space there. But for the members, um, we do a lot of different things. Uh, not only and when you say member, you mean an attorney who actually joins as the well. The attorneys who and actually join. Many people who, who, many attorneys watch and would like to become members. How would you become a member of the Bronx County Bar Association? You can, you can go on, I think the website is bronxbar.com. I know we have a couple of domain names and they all, you know, cross refer to each other. But you can call the association or you can come right into the courthouse. Uh, 851 Grand Concourse, room 124. Join the association. Uh, and there are obviously a lot of benefits as an attorney, but... Also, there are things that we do as attorneys for the community so, at large. So getting back to the, to, the, to the community, they could use the computers and they can research their own cases and use the books, I, I assume, if they get into the bar They can. There's one, I believe there's one uh, computer that is available. If not, I know there's also a computer up on the second floor that's available. But all the books are available uh, for anyone to use to research everything. Okay. Now let's talk about the lawyers. Sure. You're a lawyer, you want to join, you, you, need, you need a place to, to maybe meet with a client or to sit and talk. You can use the Bar Association, right? Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. And what other things can you use while you're there? Well, one of the, one of the really big uh, advantages of the Bronx Bar Association, and I'm a member of a lot of bar associations. I'm in leadership positions in a lot of bar associations, and, and, and most of them are great. One of the things that I think is so special about the Bronx Bar Association is you know, the leadership of the association really does advocate for the practicing attorneys. Um, I meet often with Justice McKeon, our administrative judge, um, and I, my predecessors have done the same with prior administrative judges to try to make sure that the court uh, understands the concerns of the practicing bar. And that's not just the civil court, that's in the housing court and the family court and the criminal court as what well. What kind of concerns usually come up that attorneys say, hey, c can you help us out here? For example, um, I know cases sometimes, I mean, I'm a practicing attorney, and sometimes, you know, you can't, you can't get jury trials as, as quickly as you would like to. Um, there's so many issues as a, as a trial attorney in the Bronx that you try and move things along a little quicker. You have clients who are always calling you. What kind of things do you hear? Really? No, no question, no question. And one of the things that, that I pledged to do even before I, I took office as the president was to work closely with with Justice McKeon to advocate for, quite frankly, the people of the Bronx. Because uh, I feel, uh, I'm not speaking for Justice McKeon, uh, but I feel that... Who's well known to Bronx, by yes, the way. We are, I believe that the people of the Bronx are, are underserved with respect to resources from the Office of Court Administration. Um, as you well know... What would you like to see? I, I think we need more judges. Okay. I think we need more clerks, and I think we need more uh, court attorneys. And the reason for that is 
while I understand the number of judges is set by the Constitution, uh, as a practical matter, often plaintiff's attorneys, if they have a choice of venue, will bring their cases in Bronx County. Therefore, we have a disproportionate number of civil filings in the Bronx compared to other venues. And then with respect to criminal cases, it's my experience, although I'm not um, an expert in criminal law, it seems that many more criminal cases go to verdict in Bronx County. Uh, my belief is that, you know, the attorneys believe and the defendants believe they have a better chance of acquittal here than in other counties. Therefore, by having a disproportionate number of filings and a disproportionate number of criminal cases going to verdict, you have it's a, a system. Uh, yeah, you have a tax on the resources, which yeah. is disproportionate to the so number it, of It's of almost judges. like you're a car waiting for gas, and the line is around the block, and you just can't get your car to move. And they're not opening up another pump. And that's the problem. Yeah. And is, is there anything that you think can be done? I mean, do you think they'll, the OCA, the Office of Court Administration, may bend, give us a few more judges? Is I am cautiously, cautiously optimistic? optimistic. I've spoken to Justice McKeon. Um, we're working together to, to, to bring whatever pressure we can to bear, you know, in a respectful way. Uh, I've heard, you know, you, you hear rumors that, that our concerns are being heard and that hopefully will be addressed, but I, I don't have any confirmation no, we're gonna, on that We're going to, you know, we have, still have a second or two, but I want to talk a little bit about, cause, about the jury system itself, because it looks like that has improved in the Bronx. No question. Jurors are treated very well compared to the way they were treated to in the past. Everybody has to serve now. That's doctors, that's, that's lawyers. Everybody has, has to take a chance to, to serve. But there yet still doesn't seem to be enough jurors, at least on the civil side. Well, why is that? There's, there's a couple of reasons. Um, the first is, uh, just constitutionally, there is a, there is a um, priority for the criminal cases. I mean, and, and even though I'm primarily a civil attorney, uh, I understand that and I respect it. It's much more important whether someone has their freedom Absolutely. than whether somebody gets, gets a dollar or has to pay a dollar. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break because we're going to talk to you a little bit about your experience in terms of the civil, fi civil field. But stay with us. We'll be back with more Today's Verdict right after this. Not be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe and disrupt the situation. We can get someone the cab or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends, our roommates, our, our classmates, classmates, our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We, we can. can intervene. It's on us, all of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. My daughter with her reading. Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me uh. try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive.
our neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. All right, welcome back to Today's Verdict. I'm your host, David Lesh. We are always encouraging you to stay connected. Tweet us at Today's Verdict. Well, let's continue our discussion with the current president of the Bronx County Bar Association, Dan Cassidy. Dan, all right, now that um, we've talked a little bit about the Bar Association, let's talk a little bit about being a civil trial attorney, which um, you have a lot of experience with. Tell me the types of cases that you actually take to trial. I mean, certainly I have more experience with that than I do being the president of the association. Absolutely. But, um, I have taken to verdict virtually every type of personal injury case over the, over the last 25 years, you know, whether it be automobile accidents, construction accidents, slip and fall accidents, uh, now when you not, medi not, not medical med malpractice. Not medical malpractice. Um, well, let's say, you know, somebody comes to you and they tell you that they have an issue with an accident, whether it's an automobile accident or a premises liability case. What type of things do you usually look for when you first meet with the client? Really, when you, just like every other uh, dealing you have in your life, the first thing when you do is when you meet the client, you really, you, you want to get a sense of the person. Um, is this somebody, you know, that I really feel comfortable representing? And, and it almost always is. Right. But it's got to be a two-way street. Absolutely. It's and they have to they feel comfortable you. with you as well. It's a, uh, I, I don't want to call it a marriage, but right. it really is, if you represent someone, especially in the Bronx, as yeah. we talked about with the delays, you're going to be together for a long time, and you have to feel comfortable with now, each other. Now, do you usually, you know, ask for f for photos? Do you send them, maybe take the photos yourself? Do you sometimes ask them to bring medical records to you so you can review the case beforehand? How do you it, usually handle it? It all depends it? because, uh, again, I don't have a huge practice of, of from infancy, uh, personal injury actions. But so you're many times the hired gun to go A lot out of times there. I'll come in to try the case. Okay. But, but when I do have them, I mean, sometimes they're, Literally, the accident happened a day ago, and other times it's it's months, and they say, "What do I do?" So, depending on that, is what you want to say. So, let me ask you a question: Is the the detriment of being maybe the trial guy, the hired gun to try the case, that when you don't really get it from the very beginning, sometimes you don't really know how a case has been worked up until you're actually handled the file? No question, no question. And I am, I, I can tell a great story about uh, preparing a case for trial, and I'm reading the deposition which is when you know you question the yeah. the parties under oath and I'm looking at him going boy this this attorney did not do a great job at this deposition I did the deposition <laughs> so you know you can always you, you, much like every other aspect of life you can always find someone else to say well I wish they had done that. and you know just like you say to yourself I wish I had done this I wish I had done that now do you find when you're giving a uh a case to try. Let's say the the original attorney isn't a trial attorney, doesn't feel comfortable trying the case, and you're the guy to do it now. Um, does the client then need to get comfortable with you to absolutely. be the trial guy now? Ab it's absolutely. like you're starting a whole new relationship with somebody. Abs absolutely, and it's very important. Every time I have a situation like that, I make sure that I meet with the client, with the attorney who's handled the case. Uh, usually, the attorneys had that conversation with the client and explained why um, I'm coming in. Uh, but it's very important. So how do you it's play catch up? What do you do to catch yourself up? The first thing I do, and, and one of the things, uh, much like doing this show, there is, there is so much background work that goes into putting on that trial or that television show that nobody ever sees. Um, I like to go through, in the personal injury cases, I, I want to look at the medical records. Um, I can usually get a sense of, of where the case is going from you know, the early medical records. I want to look at the depositions, um, some of the pleadings, but, and then what you do is, is you sort of do a quick overview of everything, and then you can focus in on what you need to see, and then you well, dig deeper you do, and deeper into it. what do you do, because now deeper. you're assuming maybe you're, you could be three, two, three years past the time of the actual accident. What do you do in terms of seeing the actual scene itself, if it's changed or it's different? How do you really catch up with that? It, it can be hard. It can be hard, especially as, uh, you know, as the construction continues to go on, um, you know, whether it's a, an accident yeah, in an a, area where there's say, been construction right, or, a or it's, a, uh, it's a labor law case. And obviously nothing is the same as it was two or three years ago. Yeah, look, there's no perfect, you know, there's no perfect case. Uh, we talked uh, a certainly bit, when I get them. We, we talked a little bit about, about juries and how they've, they've changed for the better. 
Uh, the first part of every trial, we, as we know, is a jury selection. How do you go about making sure that you have a fair and impartial jury? What do you, what's the technique that you use? <sighs> You know, I... If these strangers staring at you and they it, don't know who you, it, who you are or what's going on, what are you looking for? What, what are you I was, trying to do? When I was much younger, uh, I always used to get a kick out of it. Uh, and I've tried cases both as a plaintiff and, and as a defendant. Um, so from either side, I always used to sort of make a joke of the fact that, you know, a lot of times the jurors are nervous because it's a, it's a very... You're sitting down, the lawyers are standing, we're all in suits, we look, you know, we look like we're important. We take ourselves like we're important. Uh, and I always just tell them, guys, I'm the nervous one here. I'm the one who everybody's looking at and can't make a mistake. You can't make a mistake here as a juror. You just tell us how you feel about now, things. You, do, you, do you watch them as they come in? You see what they're looking at, what they're reading? What are, are you, what are you, what are you, what are you looking for in a juror? And, uh, you, uh, listen, we, we all know that you want a fair and impartial juror, but what sometimes do you look at somebody and say, that's 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 what we we're looking for here. Or like, I don't think this is person's right for us. Well, there are always specific cases may call for a specific um, type of jurors, but as a general rule, um, I'm not one of these guys who, who who believes you can garner a lot from which newspaper they're reading. Um, I'm quite frankly not a guy who thinks you can garner a lot from how they're dressed. Uh, I know if I I've been called on jury duty and I'm not wearing the suit to jury duty, uh, and I. So I don't think you can make judgments like that. I think one of the things you have to do when you're questioning a jury, um, you may have specific questions that are important. Let's say you're representing a taxi driver. Let's say you're representing a tenant that are, that are catered towards that type of thing. But you really have to engage them in some sort of conversation. Um, and you have to figure out, is this somebody that is comfortable with you? And are you comfortable with them? The, your client now, who persons actually persons actually become your client, okay? Persons become your client, and now you're basically, you know, getting ready to put your client on the stand. Is there something to do in terms of looking at your particular client to make sure your client is comfortable in front of these six to eight people that he or she doesn't know? Is there something you would say to you, to this new client that you really don't know that well to make sure they come across? as best as they possibly can in a courtroom? There are. There are a number of things. Okay. Um, the first thing is, is I will the always... The likability uh, test, look, right? And likability is, you know, that's something you're born with in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the worst things that I've ever seen anybody do in a courtroom um, as a witness, uh, as a client either that I represented or that was on the other side, is be overly nice in a, in a phony way. Uh, I you think gotta it, be who you are. I think you have to be, I think as a trial lawyer, I think as a witness, as a, as a plaintiff or a defendant, you have to be yourself. Now, that being said, there are things you always do to maximize your best self. Um, and obviously it's dress appropriately, it's, it's act in a respectful manner to the court, to the other side. Make sure that you, you know, um, not engage the jury with words, but engage the jury with your body language and your and, and looking at them. Let's talk cross examination. So important uh, during a trial. Do you have any particular technique that you use if you want to go after? I mean, it could be a doctor, it could be somebody else. Are you heavy-handed? Do you build it up? What's your usual? I am. I mean, I you know, as you know, you and I have worked together many times in the past. I personally don't. I don't like the heavy-handed approach. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe part of it's my size. Uh, part of it's just the way that I like to treat people. I don't, I don't want to be seen as a bully. I don't want to act as a bully. Very rarely will I ever aggressively go after um, a, a, a lay client, the plaintiff or the defendant, unless they do something that I think is, is apparent to the jury that, that they are you know, either blatantly lying or, or insulting in some way. Expert witness is a little bit different. Okay, you bring it at home now, you got the summation, that final argument. How do you close off, close up the, 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 kit, the trial? What, what I like to do is I like to start my, my theme in jury selection. All right. Uh, build it through opening, through my direct witness. And then in cross-examination, often what I'll do, rather than, you know, go for that kill shot where we all know it's very rare when someone breaks down crying and say, you're right, 
I did it. Right. You know, well, yeah, that um, I like to, I like to in cross examination build a couple of points that are going to be the keys to my summation. Whether it's a witness who sticks with a story that is completely uh, unbelievable, or whether it's a witness who admits to something that may be that that key cog, and then use that and where a hammer is on the summation. Now, a verdict comes, and whether it's 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 for your client or not, many viewers don't understand that. The case isn't necessarily over. Many times there are appeals that go on and mm -hmm. they take time to finally um, come to, to resolve itself. Do you find that a lot of your trials that end result in appeals? What do you usually see? Probably less than, than you would think. Um, generally, uh, generally, and this is again in my very biased view, jurors tend to get it right. They do. Uh, they may give if I'm a defendant, they may give a little bit more money than I think is appropriate, but not crazy. If I'm the plaintiff, they may not give as much as I think, but not crazy. So it's, I think it's rare when they're completely off the reservation. Any tips you want to give to someone who's watching now who thinks they may have a potential case? And but, by the way, where do we find you? Where's, where do we find you? Uh, my office, where you find me really every day is in the, is the, in in the, the Bar Association. Okay, so that's good to know. Uh, if you need to find you, you're always there. I am always in uh, room 124 of the Bar Association. And is there a number we can reach you uh, at? Or any my office way? number is 914-722-2110. Right, now, uh, and on the web, or yeah. on email, uh, it's dcassidy at danieldcassidy.com. Okay, final tips. Someone's watching, they think they may have a case, and not really sure. What advice would you give that particular person? I think the first thing you do is, is if you don't have a lawyer that, that you know and that you can call like yourself, or like me, um, go into the Bar Association. Really, you will get, first of all, often someone like me will be sitting in there, or someone like you will be sitting there, and if somebody has like a very simple question, we answer it. We don't charge anyone. And um, you're going to come back, right? I'll absolutely come back. All right. And listen, good luck on your year. Thank you very much. As president, much. we're all, yeah, uh, it's, we're all it's looking exciting. For, it's we're exciting. All, we're proud and we're looking forward to it. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and, of course, you, the viewers, for watching. If you missed any part of tonight's show, be sure to check it out at www.broxnet.tv. Also remember, if there is a legal issue or topic you'd like to see on a future edition of Today's Verdict, feel free to contact me at David Lesh at bronxnet.org or tweet us at Today's Verdict and make sure to hashtag Ask Today's Verdict. For myself and all of us at Today's Verdict, always remember, know your rights, know your issues, reach a verdict. We'll see you next time. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you.